16 seconds. So it's a pretty uh, large range of uh, wave periods. So when you say shifty, what do you mean by that? Um, just when uh, these different wave periods um, interact with each other, you can get a peak that starts moving a bit. And I think you can see some of the, that on the biggest waves here. Well, um, do you have somebody a favorite that you're rooting for today in this event? Uh, there, it's just great to watch everybody. I don't have a favorite. All right, well, uh, Justin, a professor from the University of Hawaii at Manoa, uh, got his PhD from there in Manoa as well. And thank you for joining us. Appreciate your time and being here with us in the booth. Yeah, thank you. Aloha. Aloha. Well, as you can see, our lineup is taking a little bit of a break, and our competitors are sitting in the lineup waiting for the right place to be. As we heard uh, our professor Stopa explain that sometimes the, with this interval, uh, quite the year where he made it to the finals in the Duke Invitational Competition, was known for surfing one of the biggest days at the Bay and getting the best shot of that day. And then that, at the end of that year, he got the call to be the first lifeguard at Waimea Bay at this beach. Yeah. Um, and so in that one year really was like a big uh, big year for him. And and since then, in, in, and then for the next remainder of those few years, he continued surfing in competition. And, uh, and the bay became sort of his spot, especially as he was posted up here as the lifeguard, the first lifeguard as well uh, at Waimea Bay because it was such a dangerous and treacherous place to be. Uh, that they wanted their most trusting um, individuals to be there, and he did his job incredibly. They said under his watch, not one person lost their life. Yeah, incredible, and the celebration of the life and legacy of Eddie Aikau. And you talk about treacherous Waimea, and uh, we're seeing some of Waimea's treachery right now as this set rolls through. We saw that first wave of the set. No one able to paddle into that one. Offshore winds, another big, big wave raises to the horizon big oh, drop here lining this one up and it looks like hi lenny getting exploded there on the bottom if i'm correct he uh we lost him in the trough for a second from our vision here we go big drop there for blue aaron gold and both surfers unable to withstand the mountain of white water that has encompassed them, but a, a great effort by both of those surfers. Yeah, Kyleni, as you mentioned earlier uh, in round one, he was the top of our leaderboard, and he's still staying big, busy and active. And as you said earlier, um, in 2009, when when um, when Kelly Slater was in the lead throughout most of the day, you, you, and it's not over until all the heats are done. So um, so Kai still got some work to do to keep on. There we go. Here's this angle of, from the drone. Kai Lenny making that drop, comes around that, explodes behind him. He actually does reappear, and afterwards where he loses his footing and his balance there's a water angle of it look at the size of that wave right here it explodes right behind him and still rides through that section so i think that hopefully will be a keeper for him and put it into his queue thank you for all of our production staff here making this event go back and of course we got michael guerrero and rocky Cannon. No, it, was, it was hey um i just want to say something for all this coverage as everyone's who who can't make it down to the beach like these thousands of people for those of you who are enjoying this on surfline as well as k high i want to thank uh eddie he and sean uh, keely uh, justin aguilar uh Ryder yamamoto dave yamagata and uh steven Tercino, some of the crew there at K2, uh, K KHON2 and K High uh, for all of their efforts that they've put in here and um, Hawaiian Telecom for their support as well. Thank you to the entire crew, uh, Christina and the crew over there at KHON2 um, for making all this possible. Isaiah, this was a fire drill, if you will. We don't have, you know, a lot of, a, a lot of, 
uh, planning that we're able to do. We hear the swells coming, there's speculation. You don't know if it's gonna go. And then within the last, I wanna say, 36 to 48 hours, everyone's had to scramble together to make this show possible. Yeah, and so mahalo, big mahalo to everybody and their teams that are getting this, and it's, and it's the, you know, the, the ocean, right? It, it's, you never know exactly what it's gonna turn out to. We had uh, Dr. Stopo explaining that they, we didn't know until last night. For the riders, that was a bomb. I'm thinking that was Eli Olson and Jake Maki on that wave. Here we go, one more. Giant oh. drop and couldn't make it to the bottom. Looked like Aaron Gold on that one. My goodness, we'll get that in the replay to get a closer up, but that was action. More sets coming, lining up across the bay. This one looks like it's going to take out the entire lineup and likely connect to the left across the bay. Hawaiian Water Patrol surveying the destruction on the inside, uh, and it looks like um, that was white. E Eli Olsen saying he's okay. Yep. Flying above here, you can see the repositioning, and what a scoop right now, getting Eli on the back of that ski, and out of the way. May have broken a leash. We'll see if he's still got his board with him. Got the board, nope. No, that's just the uh, ski escaping. And with that throttle right there, that could be Keone Keolana, one of the fastest ski drivers in the world. He likes the throttle. Look at this big wave. <laughs> it's amazing, on Waimea Bay, one thing that really distinguishes this wave and the way that it breaks is there's part of it, it, right where the lip hits, usually a wave will, will explode and then kind of shoot up and a little bit out. But that last one that we saw, it shot out like 50 feet to the front. And when you're riding a wave and like you got a, what seems like a fire hose shooting you from behind, it's very hard to maintain your stance and posture. Look at this drill right now by Hawaiian Water Patrol. They're gonna have to zigzag inside of the surf line right now because there's no way, I look like the channel, um, if uh, the channel has been taken out. So you can see these guys zigzagging here, checking on the competitors. Looks like that's gonna be blue, Aaron Gold. He's gonna get on the sled and oh. trying to do the pickup and just missing him. So keeping a watchful eye, Hawaiian Water Patrol. Eli Olsen, you can see him too. They've been taking quite a few waves um, with the rest of the set, Isaiah. Yeah. We call that in surfing getting caught inside where you're unable to avoid the wave and there's nothing you can do but just take it on the head. And oftentimes here, of course, I may be able to see this. You ditch your board, go under it. This is close to shore, so explosion on the shore break. So also, this that means these surfers have had to take numerous waves on the head and have been pushed near the shore break after basically getting exploded after the takeoff. Okay, so uh, let's check this out. Let's check what, what the decision time is. And that's just uh, coming in. He's okay. All right, good sign. That's Landon McNamara. <laughs> Making it to breath. shore, yeah. Uh, we took five or six monstrous waves on the head. And of course, you have to hold your breath each time. It looks like he also took his his leash off look at this replay here john john florence this is a heat recap yeah that was john john florence and jake maki on that giant wave going all the way across the bay check this one out beautiful one this looks like greg long yeah greg long with a nice drop staying in control there one more view this time of Landon McNamara on the backhand. Oh, he got behind that boil and that whitewash just engulfed him. John John Florence making it look easy, air dropping in through this huge wave. John John had a really good heat in this round. He got a couple of keeper scores, so that'll really help him on the leaderboard. Here comes Jake, grabbing rail off the takeoff. 
and trying to outrun that explosion does so. Oh, and this was Landon again, who caught a couple of really good rides in this wave, in this heat, excuse me. Made it around that one. We also saw him on that last heat, that last set. Oh, and this is from way deep. Kai Lenny. Yeah, our current leader, Kai Lenny, looking to add upon his score. And look at this drop. And <laughs> the result of uh, the impact there. Massive explosion. Oh, Aaron Gold. Took we'll that be one back on right after these messages. Exploring big waves for us. Well, quite the year where he made it to the finals in the Duke Invitational Competition. Was known for surfing one of the biggest days at the Bay and getting the best shot of that day. And then that, at the end of that year, he got the call to be the first lifeguard at Waimea Bay at this beach. Yeah. Um, and so in that one year really was like a big, uh, big year for him. And, and since then, and, and, and then for the next remainder of those few years, he continued surfing in competition. And, uh, and the bay became sort of his spot, especially as he was posted up here as the lifeguard, the first lifeguard as well uh, at Waimea Bay because it was such a dangerous and treacherous place to be uh, that they wanted their most trusting um, individuals to be there. And he did his job incredibly. They said under his watch, not one person lost their life. Yeah, incredible. And the celebration of the life and legacy of Eddie Aikau. And you talk about treacherous Waimea. And uh, we're seeing some of Waimea's treachery right now as this set rolls through. We saw that first wave of the set. No one able to paddle into that one. Offshore winds. Another big, big wave raises to the horizon. Big oh. drop here. Lining this one up. And it looks like Hi Lenny getting exploded there on the bottom, if I'm correct. He, uh, we lost him in the trough for a second from our vision. Here we go. Big drop there for Blue Aaron Gold. And both surfers unable to withstand the mountain of white water that has encompassed them, but a, a great effort by both of those surfers. Yeah, Kai Lenny, as you mentioned earlier uh, in round one, he was the top of our leaderboard, and he's still staying big, busy and active. And as you said earlier, um, in 2009, when when um, when Kelly Slater was in the lead throughout most of the day, you, you, and it's not over until all the heats are done. So. Um, so Kai still got some work to do to keep on. There we go. Here's this angle of, from the drone. Kai Lenny making that drop. Comes around that. Explodes behind him. He actually does reappear. And afterwards where he loses his footing and his balance. There's a water angle of it. Look at the size of that wave. Right here it explodes right behind him. And still rides through that section. So I think that hopefully will be a keeper for him and put it into his queue. Thank you for all of our production staff here making this event go back and of course we got Kaipo Guerrero and Rocky Kelly no, it was hey um I just want to say something for all this coverage as everyone who who can't make it down to the beach like these thousands of people for those of you who are enjoying this on Surfline as well as K-High I want to thank uh Eddie He and Sean uh, Keeley uh, Justin Aguilar uh Ryder Yamamoto Dave Yamagata and uh, Steven Tercino, some of the crew there at K2, uh, K KHON2 and K High uh, for all of their efforts that they've put in here and um, Hawaiian Telecom for their support as well. Thank you to the entire crew, uh, Christina and the crew over there at KHON2 um, for making all this possible. Isaiah, this was a fire drill, if you will. We don't have you know, a lot of a, a lot of uh, planning that we're able to do. We hear the swells coming. There's speculation. You don't know if it's going to go. And then within the last, I want to say, 36 to 48 hours, everyone's had to scramble together to make this show possible. Yeah, and so mahalo, big mahalo to everybody and their teams that are getting this. And it's, and it's the, you know, the the ocean, right? It, it's you never know exactly what it's going to turn out to. We had. 
uh, Dr. Stopo explaining that they, we didn't know until last night. Riders, that was a bomb. I'm thinking that was Eli Olson and Jake Maki on that wave. Here we go, one more. Giant oh. drop and couldn't make it to the bottom. Looked like Alan Gold on that one. My goodness, we'll get that in the replay to get a closer up, but that was action. More sets coming, lining up across the bay. This one looks like it's gonna take <laughs> out the entire lineup and likely connect to the left across the bay. Hawaiian Water Patrol surveying the destruction on the inside, and it looks like um, that was white. E Eli Olsen saying he's okay. Yep. Flying above here, you can see the repositioning. And what a scoop right now, getting Eli on the back of that ski and out of the way. May have broken a leash. We'll see if he's still got his board with him. Got the board, nope. No, that's just the uh, ski escaping. And with that throttle right there, that could be Keone Keolana, one of the fastest ski drivers in the world. He likes the throttle. Look at this big wave. <laughs> it's amazing. Waimea Bay, one thing that really distinguishes this wave and the way that it breaks is there's part where, it, where it, right where the lip hits, usually a wave will, will explode and then kind of shoot up and a little bit out. But that last one that we saw, it shot out like 50 feet to the front. And when you're riding a wave and like you got a, what seems like a fire hose shooting you from behind, very hard to maintain your stance and posture. Look at this drill right now by Hawaiian Water Patrol. They're gonna have to zigzag inside of the surf line right now because there's no way, it looked like the channel, um, if uh, the channel has been taken out. So you can see these guys zigzagging here, checking on the competitors. Looks like that's gonna be blue, Aaron Gold. He's gonna get on the sled and oh. he's trying to do the pickup and just missing him. So keeping a watchful eye, Hawaiian Water Patrol. Eli Olsen, you can see him too. They've been taking quite a few waves um, with the rest of the set, Isaiah. Yeah. We call that in surfing getting caught inside where you're unable to avoid the wave and there's nothing you can do but just take it on the head. And oftentimes here, of course, I maybe we see this, you ditch your board, go under it, this close to shore. So explosion on the shore break. So also this that means these surfers have had to take numerous waves on the head and have been pushed near the shore break after basically getting exploded after the takeoff. Okay, so uh, let's check this out. Let's check what, what the decision time is. And that's just uh, coming in. He's okay. All right, good sign. That's Landon McNamara. <laughs> Making it to shore, breath. yeah. Uh, we took five or six monstrous waves on the head. And of course, you have to hold your breath each time. It looks like he also took his his leash off. Look at this replay here. John John Florence. This is a heat recap. Yeah, that was John John Florence and Jake Maki on that giant wave going all the way across the bay. Check this one out. Beautiful one. This looks like Greg Long. Yeah, Greg Long with a nice drop, staying in control there. One more view. This time of Landon McNamara on the backhand. Oh, he got behind that boil and that whitewash just engulfed him. John John Florence making it look easy, air dropping into this huge wave. John John had a really good heat in this round. He got a couple of keeper scores, so I think that'll really help him on the leaderboard. Here comes Jake, grabbing rail off the takeoff. And trying to outrun that explosion does so. Oh, and this was Landon again, who caught a couple of really good rides in this wave, in this heat, excuse me. Made it around that one. We also saw him on that last heat, that last set. Oh, and this is from way deep. Kai Lenny. 
Yeah, our current leader, Kai Lenny, looking to add upon his score. And look at this drop. And the result of uh, the impact there. Massive explosion. Oh, Aaron Gold. Took we'll be back the right after these messages. Exploring big waves for us. Well, the information for them. I'm hoping again that the Coconut Wireless is going to soon light up and give me the latest standings on the leaderboard. Yep. I, I think there's a coconut being delivered, uh, being hand carried. Just, yeah. Uh, shake them. From the Bay of the Tradewind Wireless, too. So, uh, yeah, let's take a look at uh, who we have in this heat. We have Emily Erickson out there in the pink jersey. Cora Rothman is in blue. Mark Healy, he's in purple. Nathan Fletcher is in yellow. Nick Von Rupp, all the way from Portugal. He is in white, in orange. Tyle Shipman in red. Ezekiel Lau and in black. Stay psyched. It's J-O-B, Jamie O'Brien. Oh, yeah. So this is uh, round two. We've seen these surfers already in the water and taken to it for their second attempt. Some love on the beach right there for Andrea Moeller coming in from heat number one of round two. And again, this eddy that we're running right here, uh, we have made it co-ed, and it's great for women's surfing. It's great for women's uh, big wave riding. Mm -hmm. Each of these heats have at least one female surfer in each of the heats. And when we get to the next heat, actually uh, heat number three, we're going to have two in the way of uh, Justine Dupont and KK Kiala Kenley. But right now, Emmy Erickson is out there uh, in the lineup in the pink jersey, a second-generation big wave rider. Her dad, Roger Erickson was a fixture at the Bay, especially through, you know, the 70s and, and 80s, and one of those guys that were riding big waves, you know, before mm -hmm. uh, inflation vests, <laughs> before yeah. jet skis, you know? And if you guys are wondering, this is easy, bro. Like, it's easy. <laughs> but yeah, Roger Erickson, also a lifeguard uh, for, for a time as well, watching over the safety of all of our uh, beachgoers on the North Shore. And I believe, I mean, it's got to be historically significant, the only father-daughter combo right. of Eddie competitors over the years. Pretty outstanding. Yeah. yeah. This year, we have a father-son combination in the Eddie. We got Mason Ho competing, as well as Michael Ho, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, we got brothers out there as well, yeah. you know? So uh, it is, uh, it's the best big wave surfers in the world. But then again, it's invitational, yeah. so you can't, you know, nobody can just enter. You have to be invited. And just to get invited to this event is an honor in itself. Yeah, and, you know, the alternate list, you look at who's on that list. It is uh, an amazing collection of big wave surfers, and uh, we've had a couple of them get into this event today uh, due to uh, injury. We've also seen in the past, uh, especially with our international surfers, sometimes hard to make the logistics of getting here to the bay uh, when it's called on. Here we go, it's on for our surfer in orange. That looks like Tile Shipman once again, possibly. Orange, pink, or red? Pick a color <laughs> and stick with it. But lots of tents, lots of people. They've been here since last night, yesterday even, and then just hey. To That's the beach right. this morning. All the people camping <laughs> over there in the bushes on top of the cliff. Look at you guys. No need, no need permit. Everybody just charged it. Huh? Oh, bro. It's, it's the Eddie permit. Anything goes. Eddie would go and anything goes. That's pretty much the mantra when it's a day like today. Yeah. Hey, my mantra is uh, please uh, ma lama waimea and pick up all of your rubbish pick up all of your Paula everybody that's coming mm -hmm. down to the beach on the cliffs in the bushes whatever gather more trash than you even brought so yeah, this is this is for next year because you guys can't hear us on the beach but yeah <laughs> when you guys come down ah, when you watch it later because we're going to have the uh replay yeah this evening on khon2 uh we're going to have the replay so when you get back home and you hear it yeah it just should be every day you know yep. what I mean? we are one ocean that's uh i'm wearing my hat because that's my cause and we are one ocean as we see the ocean folding over couple, at the takeoff zone force. Yeah, we've yet to see a Goofy Foot winner at this eddy, and I'm really trying to 
see if this is the breakthrough year for a goofy foot. We've seen Landon McNamara get some bombs. He's uh, uh, checked in all of his scores, and we saw a pair of goofy footers there. I think that was uh, Mark Healy and Cole Rothman. Yep. Uh, yep. Uh, or... Uh, well, it could have been Nick Von Ruff, yeah, too, in the, white. Uh, in the white jersey. But we So do we do have uh, eight surfers out there, and it looks like we have one, two, three of them being Goofy Foots, Cole Rothman, Mark Healy, and Nick Von Ruff. And just quickly, back to your mention, I love the message of picking up your trash because you're so right. It is, doesn't matter whose it is, it is all ours as we see Nick Von Rupp in the white in front of Cole Rothman, uh, who's in the blue. So a pair of Goofy Foots sharing a wave at Waimea on their backhand. Yeah, so we talk about the judging, Rocky. I would I would think that Cole is going to get the higher score out of the two. He was deeper on the wave in a more critical section, correct? Yes. And, and that's almost what you can guarantee uh, if two surfers ride the wave equally, the deeper surfer will get a little notch or a nudge in the score. Right. That is the, the more critical point of the wave to be in as you uh, so eloquently mentioned just a minute ago and uh, steep deep and underneath stay steep deep underneath <laughs> and uh, there is the river over at Waimea. And stay patient in the traffic and so it's going to be one of those days only one way in <laughs> actually two ways out yeah you go around the island two ways but right. you're going to end up in the same place because it's an island yeah <laughs> we, yeah it's going to be difficult to uh find yourself in a different location driving around in yeah, a circle right. but that highway right there and that bridge is just going to be a choke point for the entire <laughs> island today <laughs> and there you can see look at the the water like you talked before coming from the ocean connecting to the river right over that berm yeah you don't want to be a river roller uh, we've seen those before uh not expecting to get wet oh. dry clothes on backpack everything yeah yard sale there goes the cell phone and then uh but that sand is also super deep so it's not like you can like fully sprint through it it's uh one step and you're like up to your knees so you gotta really <laughs> plan it well with your timing and crossing that very low-lying point watching out for those big sets washing over yeah rocky yeah, look at these big sets coming right now you know summertime we have the the fourth of july paddle race the huyo Nalu uh, puts on and the final thing after you do your long paddle from sunset or turtle bay all the way to waimea is you gotta run up that soft sand in the hill and yeah that's the killer i've seen guys go from first place to last place that would be me <laughs> <laughs> not easy that run up the beach you can Some paddle ways. fast but you gotta run in the end well, here we go, flying up above, lots of white water and still some uh, jockeying of positioning uh, out in the lineup in this heat two of round two. No priority we, we should bring up as well is, you know, it's positioning mm -hmm. that gives you the right of way. And the kind of camaraderie, uh, gentleman, gentlewoman type of uh, priority positioning. Kind of, you know, back to the old school and the way Waimea, I think, was intended to be surfed from the very beginning. Uh, and I think all spots kind of in that way, but we are taking a step away from our conventional criteria and, uh, and format with this non-elimination, non-priority, and uh, pretty much non-interference. Yeah, but that's priority every day, even free surfing. You yeah. know, if you're deep, why are you paddling on the shoulder? <laughs> <laughs> Just know that the guy's already got it. Right. You know, because I know, I, hey, we, we welcome everyone. Hey, to you, the might, you might pearl, though. <laughs> we, we, yeah, that's what people come Always got to check. That's what, yeah, I check, but don't, but don't go. But don't go. Yeah. Just, uh, just yeah. try to bring some etiquette and, and some, some, you know, some of the unwritten rules that we have in surfing because we've had a large so surf audience join right. us in the last, I want to say, decade and yep. even more so in the last the last years. couple of years exactly so we'll see a rider dropping into this one and who are we going to go with there i'll let you go rocky i'm good yeah Ty thank you for Ty that Ty i Ty appreciate Sh it i'm going to go kyle <laughs> shipman on that one what do you think oh maybe zeke lao yep ezekiel everybody get two guesses <laughs> <laughs> two guess maximum <laughs> We know that we're bringing here. We know more spotter over here. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Typo took one swing and he's like, I'll pass it to you now. <laughs> Here's the rope. <laughs> oh, nah, we, nah, nah, just we, kidding. Yeah. We're having a good time. We are. Ezekiel, it, Ezekiel Lau, 29 years old, Hawaiian, Kamehameha Schools. And the good news is 
Rocky, we're going to see Ezekiel Lau back on the championship yes. tour when we kick off the tour. Here we go. Yeah, nice late drop there for Zeke. Really casual looking. Made it look a little easier than it actually was. Survives that gnarly white water that I heard Isaiah mention earlier. Shoots outwards. Hey, that's <laughs> something to talk about as well. You got to keep your shorts on. Right. And, and when everything's too. going every different direction, it is uh, something to pay attention to. Yeah, if you're not wearing a wetsuit, you definitely want to keep those buggers double knotted yeah. and um, around your waist. So Ma Mason Ho getting ready for his next heat, number three coming up. Yeah, Mason Ho, 34 years old, but still really, you know, that Menahunio, that Grom in heart. Like yeah. a, one of the most entertaining, I've, I've said it before, I'll mm -hmm, say it again, mm -hmm. one of the most entertaining surfers in the entire world. When it just comes to like, you want to watch someone surf? Mason's going to Mason's going to entertain you no matter what the wave is, where it is. He is a creative genius when it comes to wave riding. I love it. Notice he has the quad fin on his gun here. Yeah, you know, and I was curious about some of the differences in choices for our surfers. Uh, we may even possibly still have one of those OG traditional single fin well, riders at the bay. We have Emily Erickson is out there on her uh, uh Ryan Carlson, single fin, her, hmm. her old faithful. She's uh, Emily's out there. So you see the, That's the so design cool, change. You got someone paddling out on a quad, but yeah. right now in the heat, you have a traditional single fin gun out in the lineup. Right. And, and I think that's part of the beauty of this event as well as the equipment, uh, choices, progressions, but also throwbacks and uh, sticking to some traditional styles incorporating all of that in this single event is what makes this very special. So still on uh, the uh, standby for any kind of um, information. There's a high washer right there. That's a toe tickler. <clears throat> Reaching up the shoreline right there over the berm. Yeah, so next heat, we got uh, Justine Dupont, Kayla Kenley, Shane Dorian, Kahea Hart, Kealii Mamala, Shumbo, uh, Lucas Shianka, Mason Ho, and Peter Mel. Here we go, live action, and just getting a little bit, hitting some speed bumps toward the edge. That looked like that was uh, Jamie O'Brien. That looked like Black. <laughs> really digging in his rail and uh, looking for that big bottom turn, but couldn't quite bring it back down as we watch live action for Nathan yellow. Nathan Fletcher. All right, so Nate Fletcher. Nate Dog getting one out there as well. We talked about Nathan Fletcher, 34 years old, lives on the North Shore now, originally from San Clemente, California. Uh, Nathan Fletcher, part of that Fletcher Ohana, that Fletcher family, of her, uh, Father Herbie, uh, really put together as a pioneer here on the North Shore. Um, invented traction mm -hmm. in the way of Astro Deck yeah. and really brought, you know, we t when we talk about safety and jet skis and stuff, really one of the first guys to bring the jet ski, ski into the surf. Yeah, and maneuvering it and doing that, those kinds of things on the backhand right here looks like Mark Healy in the purple. So Healy with a big drop and a big, big bunch of white water behind him. Firm stance for Mark Healy and he is going to maintain a finish right behind him, dropping into this one, getting to the bottom. That's going to be Nick Von Rupp out of Portugal. Yeah, Nick making it to that open face on the inside section there and trying to stay close to the white water for a possible kind of length of ride, shore break extension possibility. We've seen that occur just a few times today. And it really uh, comes with being able to draw that right line and keep with it. He's trying to pump and stay with it. Looks like it's going to fade out and not let him all the way into the shore break. That probably could be a blessing in disguise. Yeah, yeah. So I shook the coconut tree and the, and the hey, what information. You know? oh, so here's our latest. Crack them open, boo. <laughs> bring them home. Bring them home. Here we go. <laughs> here's the latest in the leaderboard. And we got a big change on top. Number one right now. John John Florence has taken the lead on the leaderboard. Kai Lenny currently in second place. Landon 
McNamara in third, Billy Kemper in fourth. So John John, he's done surfing for today. Will he hold on mm. to that top position? Well, he's our defending champ, looking to be our first ever two-time and back-to-back. -back. That would be quite the story. Yeah, so, uh, gosh, he's got a perfect wave, a, a 30, a 28.7, a 25.5. He's He does have a lead on the rest of the pack, Rocky, um, but we never like to speak too soon. We got lots of surfing going on, and our friends at Surfline to tell us that it should pulse through the afternoon. Right here, we have this uh, replay up and down. Those J-O-B. Just behind the little boil there, on the further on the inside, looks like his foot kind of slipped off the back as we watch yellow. That is Nathan Fletcher. And Nathan kicks out. He had one of the most horrendous waves I've ever seen at Tiahu Po'o at Chopo. That was just put him on the map as one of the craziest individuals on the planet. Yeah, Nathan Fletcher. All compliments. <laughs> Mark Healy right there. Healy uh, survives a big mountain of white water. Yeah, Nathan Fletcher, I mean, shoo. giant waves. I mean, the guys jumped out of a helicopter onto a wave. Yeah. So. <laughs> Pretty all around talented guy, but definitely uh, pushing limits on all fronts. Here we go at Hawaiian Water Patrol. Talk to us about this dance to get through uh, the white water and the shore break. Rocky. Oh man, it is such a, a, a delicate yet rough existence to be operating a jet ski in these conditions. Not only responsible for the lives of others, <clears throat> but responsible for an expensive piece of equipment and your own life on top of it all. It is, uh, and then, you know, Performing under pressure, there's an audience. Right. You can't deny the spectacle that is surrounding you. When you look up and you're on the ski in there, you look up to the every inch of land is covered by a person. What kind of problem can th all this white water <coughs> present for a jet ski when we talk about the impeller and, and the propulsion of that well, jet ski? Well, it does have to uh, suck up the water to get propulsion and to get the into the impeller and the jet. And it only functions with water right it does not function well when it sucks up foam. air yeah. or foam and that will cause it uh, i've heard the word cavitate uh, basically it's like a misfire when you're pulling the throttle it's revving but you're not going anywhere and nothing's happening as far as forward motion so very tricky to operate in these conditions very tricky to operate that high in the lip and oh. air drops wow how shipman going for it you could see him getting hung up in the lip by the offshore wind mm -hmm. and unable to get the inertia that it would take to get down that wave face. You know, I'm not sure if, you know, sometimes you stop paddling too soon or I heard um, Twiggy explain sometimes that there's a little current actually pulling up the face or some water moving against you with the wind. You pair that together, that's just not a... Uh, positive equation for your uh, big wave endeavor yeah we had a, a talk and we had a piece with brock little talking about mm -hmm. his closeout wave that he caught at the bay of legendary wave and how he couldn't get down the face at all because it was so much water moving up the face here's a replay he's trying to go like down an up escalator right there there's a water angle of Kyle just stroking into it, gets to his feet, and then is a little hung up. Just that little separation of the board from the wave creates that slippage off the front. You saw his front foot kind of slide, almost did the splits as he was going into the water. So it was a little bit scary for a moment there, I'm sure, for Tile, but he looks to be up and okay with bombs out the back. Oh my, here we Whoa. go. You can see them coming. Mm -hmm. And the guys out there in the lineup, they can see them coming. The crowd feels it on the beach. They're starting to cheer. Oh, this is a wow. big set, Rocky. Oh, man. Is it going to take out the entire lineup? Possibly. Is anyone going to spin on this wave? Who's in position? Jet ski trails 
over the shoulders of these waves tells you they're on the move as well. Oh my, oh, Mark. Oh, that was Mark Healy just <laughs> floating and fluttering. My goodness, on a 50 foot face. Oh, geez. One more. Let's see if we got any takers here. There's just like too much water drawing. I don't know if that's one's even possible with riding. Uh, right, I know. Like, uh, you need like go go gadget arms to be able to get into that. Like, with, you know, orangutan arms or something. Like, it, it's just almost impossible to paddle in from where those surfers were, how deep they were. Oh. And sometimes I almost feel like on a on a real concave, cupped out, giant wave like that, it turns to physics in a way. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, the inertia it takes to actually catch it and then stand up and get down the wave face. It's mathematically not possible. May, at, time, <laughs> at times, at times, I, yeah, I'm not professor, but um, yeah, I'm yeah, a I get surfer, what you're saying. You know, and and some of these big boards we talked about a little earlier with Isaiah is like. Even though the wave is huge, it still has a hard time fitting a 10-foot board into the contour right. of some of these waves. So you factor in so many variables of what can go wrong. And uh, just like the eddy needs everything to go right to have this event, the surfers catching these waves need just as much to go right to be able to make it down the face. Is it true? You have to be for far enough in so that you can catch the wave, but you have to start paddling soon enough to get enough of that whole speed to even catch it and you could just see mark healy he wanted it totally but he, he was couldn't get down the face just could not and i think at a certain point he was like okay i have a chance to get out of this unscathed right. and i'm gonna pull the pull the you know the emergency break right now look at this vision oh my gosh that's a monster oh that was like almost if he would have kept going it would have looked like brock goofy foot yeah that Potentially. One, that one took out the bay. That one yeah. went, you know, corner to corner at Waimea. And that is a giant wave. Let me see. Our next heat getting some Kokua, some help out to the lineup and uh, preparing for their second attempt. That'll be heat three that's on deck. Heat number two of round two right now is the heat that we're watching live. And look at all of It looks like a giant unsavory hot tub <laughs> <laughs> look at the lines on the horizon and more swells hitting the peak here at waimea and look at the water patrol oh they're on the move starting to gun it yeah they recognize where they're at as well and look on out to the horizon oh. this drone view shows you the mountains of water that are approaching the lineup right now Oh, drop wow. it into this one. I think that's Mark. Healy again. Oh, going for it. Swallowed. Oh, my gosh. What a charger. Well, Healy, an incredible free diver, mm -hmm. Rocky, and I think he's free diving right now as uh, we speak. It's expensive right now, not so free. He's paying some price. Yeah. <laughs> oh. But, yeah, he is... Uh, Got back to the surface, so... One of those guys that, yeah, he can dive deep, 80 feet with on one breath, maybe plus. I'm not gonna, you know, shortchange him at all, but he goes super deep and he had to use all of it right there. And what about the situation he's in right now? Taking the rest on the head. Oh, here we go. Look at this. To the water up. patrol. Better hurry, guys. There we go. They got it. So impressive. Another big way of approaching here. Our safety team, Hawaiian Water Patrol, I can't talk about it enough. Mm -hmm. Just so impressive on how quick the pickups are right now in these hazardous giant conditions. Yeah, and, and the communication too, because you've got like six or seven rescue skis out there trying to, uh, you know, triage and see who needs what, when, and where. Right. And, you know, it's, it's, it's a big area, but it gets small when you put more skis in the water and, uh, you know, the fear and the, uh, result of collision is real so these guys got to be ultra aware that the, the non-verbal communication as well just knowing what to do and knowing each other so well is a big part of it replay time oh boy here's mark healy on a bomb he was gonna do this on the wave before it gets a second chance and makes it all worth it huge drop that is gonna get some attention from our judges uh that is that's that's what it's all about you know executing 
those steep drops on giant waves. KK on the paddle out, Kiala Kenley. There she goes with her body harness leash, that technique uh, to protect the lower limbs and avoid the possibility of having your leash around your ankle being ripped one way or the other and doing something to your ankle or your knee, a very real possibility. So cool to see the creativity and innovation there from KK. Really a pioneer in women's big wave surfing. And we are celebrating one of the many things we're celebrating here at the Eddie Big Wave Invitational is the women in the Big Wave community. We have at least one female surfer in each of these heats. Correct. And it's been a celebration on the progression uh, of, uh, of women's Big Wave surfing. And we're also really celebrating the inclusion of all of the women in this year's Eddie. It's been tremendous. They've earned it. And... I know there's a, a lot of our Wahine surfing pioneers, Auntie Rel, just to name one of many, but uh, one that stands out for me as we oh, see the stoked Kahuku Red Raiders on the beach right there. One of uh, two North Shore high schools. Don't forget about us Bulldogs, all right? The Wailua Bulldogs. Wailua Bulldogs. I graduated from Lelihua, so you're, I'm, a, you're, mule, you're I'm a, a mule. I'm a mule dog. Yeah, I went to Wailua and Lelihua. Oh, you did? You mule, mule dog? Yeah, mule dog. <laughs> yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. Wow. Yeah. You get to choose your jersey. Pretty much. Or you can make them into one. Yeah, I'll be the one and only. Now, nah, there's a few of us who've done yeah. that before, but we are mule dogs. And um, we got some happy spectators that this event is happening in 2023 on this 22nd day of January. You see the residual effect of that big washing wave that Mark Healy was on, I'm sure, was the one that went over the berm right there and folks trekking across hey. during the low. How are these guys? I think they crossed the caution tape. Probably. Yeah, it's... Get back. Oh! <laughs> big drop right there. Is this tile? That's tile shit, man. On a big one. And look at he's celebrating right now. Made the drop, now making it look easy. Shit, man. Is he going to go for the connection into the shore break? He sure is. It looks like he's committed to this mm. one. This Hunkering could be down. a beefy shore break for Shipman. Tile Shipman. And this one's going to kind of double, triple over itself right now. It's going to give him a nice ride to shore. Yep, cruising on in. I believe uh, probably approaching the end of the heat as we saw Heat 3 getting out there. And Tile saying thank you, mahalo to the beach oh, and to oh. Uncle Eddie. Look at that. Paul Rothman getting a big one on his own. Rothman emerging from the white waters, looking solid on his board. Koa <laughs> coming here as the walls look like they're going to converge on the bay. He's going to just bank it off the top, I think, right there. Oh, wow. here we go. This is a huge wave. Even though it's so far inside, it's still quadruple or bigger over his head. And he wanted to do the shore break run, but he didn't convert it there oh but impressive just uh, to make that drop to yeah. survive the giant white water and now decision time for Koa. let's see if he's going to make it on this wave looks like he's got it yeah he's kind of right outside the shore break where it's just breaking over about four feet of water it's all sand but it's still Super, super dangerous. And look at our Hawaiian Water Patrol positioning themselves mm. right there in the seam. Oh boy, yeah, gotta go, gotta go. There's the Waimea Can River run right there. A little bit ID, who we got there? A little bit backlit with yeah. the silhouette, hard to tell. Sometimes we uh, try to identify by shape, but <laughs> that is uh, Cole Rothman, we know for sure. Yeah, on the way out. Who is on the back of the ski. We welcome all of you watching from here on the island of Oahu and around the state of Hawaii. Thank you for joining us and all of you watching from different parts around the world. Getting a lot of uh, uh, viewers from the state and beyond. Wow. 
Healy. Mark Healy again. Oh, He's was... relentless in this heat. Can he survive that white water? Yes, he does. Oh Mark my Healy. Gosh. He wants it. Oh, come on for the goofy foot. Let's this do could it. be the one. This could be the goofy foot hero. Oh, come on, Mark. Look at that. Mark Healy. Freaking oh. wave was so huge. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Mountains upon gallons, thousands of gallons on his head right there. I'm still looking for him. Hopefully he's there. there he okay. Is. okay. He got dragged about three quarters of a football field underwater. Wow. Mark Healy, so <laughs> impressive uh, with his surfing, his steady stance, as well as just pure courage on that wave yeah and survival after that i mean the drop was so so long it took him like i don't know how many seconds to get to the bottom i thought for sure he was a goner in that explosion it happened on him the, the wave happened to him the wave before but he made the adjustment for this one and survived that that's gonna be another could be a big number good attention from our judges and uh we'll see where that leaves him when this is all said and done for heat number two. Still got three more action-packed heats to go. Well, we saw some, you know, big numbers, perfect scores getting thrown down. I mean, when you look at the criteria of what the Eddie is all about, I feel that that needs to go there. Yeah, uh, and we've seen the scores on the board already, so kind of comparing those waves to Mark Healy's wave just now, it is right on par and parallel. <laughs> Made it he's, to the beach. Look he's happy him. to be parallel on the beach right now with his board laying there. <laughs> Let's check out this replay. Let's start first here. Tile. Tile Shipman. Yeah, he survive, survives the explosion. Kind of rode high on that one, escaped it a little bit. Gave a little uh, shaka to Water Patrol as he rode by and then <laughs> was trying to negotiate this inside section possibly for a shore break finale the infamous waimea shore break eddie finale but got a little tripped up here or uh kind of makes his final bid and wave to the crowd and uh, lazily just falls off the back and says thank you eddie thank you lord and cole rothman that was a beast yeah cole rothman with a big Big drop and just solid in his approach here. Able to make that connection. Look at him from the water, Carl Rothman. Oh, on the tippy toes, pulling mm. it off. Yeah, just nearly falling toe side. Mark Healy, you saw the fluttering airdrop of that and then being able to hold on through this avalanche of white water was sheer will, commitment, a lot of... Uh, training going in into that survival right there but look how much water surrounds him he just disappears in that <laughs> white water out. comes back out that was nuts. looking at him right now he wants some more and how intimidating is this wave coming at him and healy just decides to point it this is from the haleiva side of the bay the left coming across and wow that was so so gnarly Mark Healy. Yeah, let's give it up man, to Mark bro. Healy right now. We're going to give him a clap. For <laughs> and, you know, it's pretty cool. All the surfers, when they get to shore, they have to turn around and kind of have that moment of reflection, of appreciation. And you just wonder what's going through each individual's head at the at the moment. Yeah. But I feel like a lot of it is just, you know, that admiration of what, what just happened. And, and imagine the adrenaline right now that's flowing through mark healy's body as he's standing on the sand right now it is it has to be just redlining yeah uh, for the north shore surfer oh here we got more it's not over yet yeah we got yellow out the back that is uh, nathan fletcher he was the deeper surfer I believe maybe red ezekiel Lau was in front oh, i'm still trying to catch my breath and mm. i have and i haven't even been underwater after mark <laughs> healy's ride that was um spec Spectacular. Well, we want to give a shout out and mahalo to all of our broadcast partners, including our main 
Can't do it without him. Producer em. Salt in Air Studios. Can't do it without him. It is uh, once again a bang up production with multiple angles. You're seeing Mark Healy. I think is that Mark grabbing on? Yeah, for more? he wants some more. Look wow. at him. Wow, he was on the beach, and he's that's what he was contemplating. Like, hmm, should I go back out there? Heavy. How much time do I got? Two minutes? Yeah, let's run it. Heavy. Heavy, uh, Mahalo heavy. Salt in their studios, Surfline. Thank you so much, KHON and K High, all partnering up yeah. to put this together. Hawaiian Tell, they got a circuit up and running overnight this is last true. night and able to uh, get us up and running for this broadcast. So, you know, we don't have a lot of time to prepare for no. this Eddie event when People it happens. People have been up all night right now getting I, ready I for I mean, this. it has been. Uh, you know, a fire drill, getting everything together, and we've made it happen, thanks to all of our great partners. Replay, Nathan Fletcher here. You know, it's like fish like Hexgate, it's just like, they're all waiting. Yeah, that was either uh, Emily Erickson or Ezekiel Lau. Hard to tell the, the red and pink, and they're both regular foot surfers as well. Yeah, maybe next year we're gonna get colored jerseys, but some with stripes on top. Yeah. And this is a free, hey, free idea. <laughs> <laughs> colors, but yeah, then some is stripe. He says it's free now. <laughs> <laughs> some is stripe, and then some is solid. So yeah. then you can really tell the difference. Yeah, like red Hawaiian. and white. Red and white kind of wears Waldo action, you know. Uh, Be uneasy. But uh, yeah, you can see it really easily. Even a rainbow jersey. See that little Why rainbow not? mist in uh, in the wave as it passes by. Such a beautiful sight. Especially when you're high and dry it's and looking at the yeah. screen. Ooh, here Look we go. Oh, oh. oh my lord. Oh, oh no. I think that was Zeke. That looked like that was the go for it attitude of Ezekiel. Wow. We know he's a warrior, not just because he's a Kamehameha alumni, cool. he's a surfing yeah. warrior. And he just put his head down and went into battle. Look, he's back up. Uh, he's back above water already. And paddling. Wow. He not Pao Lao. He is <laughs> on a roll. Man, he's got a small kind deflate as uh, the spectators get another toe tickler up the sand. And our next heat gets ready. Marshalls, Raymond, Marshall. Raymond and Riley. Yeah. Handling down there. Thank you, guys. Check yep. out this wave coming from Impossibles across the base. So you see that wave way back there. It's not, a, it's not possible. That's it. That, literally, <laughs> and that's the name of it as well. Oh, why not? There he is, Mark Healy. <laughs> Getting a, a message Relentless. from uh, Holy Healy. Relentless. <laughs> Thank you for that. Gets another one. Was on the shore, contemplated, hey, do I want to go back out and go and does so? Right behind him. That uh, looks like could be either Emily Erickson or Ezekiel Lau. It looks like it's Zeke again, right back up and riding. One more set. Oh, going down there. Two surfers going down. That was Nick Von Ruff in the white. But so I stand corrected. Healy was not reflecting. He was or breathing. He was just getting a breath and contemplating to go back out or ready to go back out. He was not uh, not done yet either. Yeah. And a reminder to everyone watching: these surfers they can catch four waves in their heat. But after four waves, they're, su they're supposed to come in. But Mark Healy realized probably on the beach, got that breath, hey, I can get some more points. Yeah, I'm gonna go back out there. And he did it, mission accomplished for Mark Healy. Yeah, and was able to find one more before the end of the heat and made his trip back out to the lineup well worth it. See all the turbulence just inside of our surfers from the previous breaking waves. Tower 29, Waimea Bay. You know, the implementation of that loudspeaker system really helped a lot in the preventative actions that have been able to save lives at Waimea, rather than with just a, a little megaphone as there's Mark once again. Okay, so now Mark is finally coming in. And I'm gonna give him another round of applause, Mark Healy. There you go. Yeah. Wow, what a heat for Mark Healy. Yeah, if you see him, hands on the knees, he's 
feeling the the impact of this wave right here and the subsequent others as he was able to make that huge drop chalk up another pretty good score make it to the flats out in front to show the judges that hey i made the drop i'm here i'm still riding check out the water angle that wave is just enormous oh, well we'll and wait for see what the judges say as we take take a look at these rides uh, but mark healy his first fourth eddie mm. could this be the one for mark healy he's been you know a guy that has been on that list for over a decade now uh going on two decades actually and being that it is his fourth attempt and his fourth um, shot, as we see a somebody Baboos. down there. <laughs> Baboos, <laughs> knucklehead, same thing, yeah. Uh, I'm not sure what he was doing, collecting firewood? I don't know. <laughs> but I get away from the ocean. Don't you see the closeout sets right now? And, as, and as the a yellow card. As, as, as a former lifeguard, Rocky. I feel like I'm doing, get frustrated. I feel like I'm interrupting natural selection sometimes. You know, like, wow, I'm going to save this guy and he's going to go on and breed. Like, uh, <laughs> I'm, I swear, I'm like, this is not right. This, uh, I'm interrupting, like, I'm, uh, I'm giving a right. steak to a polar bear. I shouldn't uh, be doing that. Uh, but, right. You know? Uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? I love hey, yeah, good call, man. Two, Listen to the lifeguards. Two. They know what they're Judges doing. They, <laughs> when they have a sign or a caution tape up, it's for a reason. Here's the recap of this heat. Oh, wow. Everyone. Big, steep, deep drop for Zeke Olau back there. Zeke was on it. Once again, Tyle Shipman out in front, HFD, Honolulu Fire Department. Mahalo for your service, my friend. Mahalo for your shredding at Waimea. As we see Nick Von Rupp and Koa Rothman sharing a wave backhand at the bay. Koa going to continue there. And a big, huge one for Mark Healy. The man he of the a, heat. He is a man of the heat. He had a couple like that just bombing from the outside he had that one where it just wouldn't let him in but this one was one that he was able to see daylight again after that huge whitewater impact Kyle just got a little airborne and then quite slippery on the front there for Tile. this was the one that could have been an epic ride or a horrendous wipeout mark thankfully able to skirt out the back Tile on another good one Making a good showing here. One of our uh, blue collar heroes, if you will, like we've talked about earlier. These guys are not traveling pros, but they love big waves and they love Waimea Bay. Carl Rothman with a big drop as well. And then again, the man of the heat, Mark Healy, doing it. Coming off the bottom, looking for the connection, survives the explosion. Wow. Oh, man. Hmm. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. Gather your breath. Whew. Another heat in the water when we return. Yeah. Got right right back out there, caught another good one. But Mark Healy's wave, man, the way that wave exploded behind him. Mm -hmm. And he disappeared, yep. and then he came out. Uh, and uh, what the, how's that inside section that took him out? That was incredible. That left that was coming from the Haleiwa side, I don't know if I've ever seen, I can't remember the last time I've seen that inside section looking that huge and daunting it almost looked as big as the peak was exactly yeah that was kind of freaky of like you know how far in he's riding and then where that wave connects over from that side it is not anywhere near the main peak but it was as tall as some of the biggest waves out there that was impressive he sent it over the ledge we just got a glimpse of him from that live angle looking from kind of, you know, the, the back of the wave or the, the, the back door kind of looking towards the right hander. But he was there and then he wasn't there. But you can only imagine what he went through because he looked like he was in a very hard and precarious position. Right. It's hard to tell from that angle if he ended up getting into it or if it blew him off the back but look, he's got the ski assist so apparently he definitely did get that one on the head so lucas chaga oh here's the one of red this was mason ho's wave 
Oh, actually, I think oh. that might be Justine Dupont. She's in the pink. Oh, my goodness. So that was a great oh, wave. Amazing and uh, back to back, our Wahine surfers, Justine and Keala. So Keala able to hang on and thread the needle right there. Walk the tightrope as we see. Chianka, I think he actually went and probably went over. You saw his board for a glimpse right there. If there's another angle, we could look at that wave of Lucas and just admire the commitment, the charging of that, you know, admire that part and then cringe at the wipeout and what the ultimate consequence was on that wave. Because yeah, I mean, he had to be committed. That was crazy. And thanks for correcting Justine Dupont. Did you see that massive wave that she caught at Cortez Bank last week? Oh my gosh, I, I, like, how do you even get the, you know, get your head in that zone to go on a wave like that? And for our, our viewers who aren't aware, um, Cortez Bank is this wave that's, it's like over 100 miles off of San Diego. It's it's right. not even an, an, a land mass. It's a, a reef that's just in it's the like middle shelf, of the yeah. ocean. Right. And uh, very rare to, and hard to get because, mainly because of the wind conditions mm -hmm. have to be just mm -hmm. right. So anyway, but Justine Dupont, actually from that session, her wave was the best one, it, at least in my opinion, of yeah. that session from what the footage I've seen so far. Massive wave, so uh, Justine, on her last wave, I apologize on uh, the color mix up, but that was definitely Justine charging amazing waves here at Waimea Bay. There you see the lineup of jerseys that our surfers are wearing. So we're pretty much running, you know, with eight surfers, we're <laughs> are all the colors of the rainbow represented <laughs> right. and everything in between. Uh, if you think of new colors, let us know, but we're trying to pick the best colors that have the most distinction and uh, right. identification ability because our red and our pink and our orange, orange. have sometimes been a little uh, cross-colored right. or, uh, you know, cross-pollinated <laughs> when we're calling the shots uh, on the screen here and then, um, you know, different lighting and, and yeah. brightness and, and uh, darkness on the, the screen has made it a little there. There you see them right in a row, like, wow. You know, if they're on a wave mm. riding in motion, it's a little tricky, <laughs> but... Uh, yeah. We want to uh, thank you all for tuning in and, and bearing with us on, on that little side of things. But it's been quite the entertaining day. We're in the afternoon stretch here. Heat number three, 50 minute heats for this second round. And uh, we've seen Kale Imamala get a couple, get a one really good wave in the beginning. Yeah. Then it was our Wahine going back to back, Justine and Keala. And looks like possibly another opportunity out the back, Isaiah. Yeah, more lines out the back. Thank goodness the, the jet skis are there to help because there's, you know, on a normal day when you when you wouldn't have the jet ski assist, getting through all that white water, especially on those closeout sets, mm -hmm. would be, you know, very difficult um, to the horizon. If it's anything that's going to be ridden here in this set. Yeah, I don't know, but I see a lot of activity just on the outside. So we'll see if our surfers start to move in position. A couple of surfers paddling for this one. One of them gets it. Drone is honing in on, looks like our surfer in red, Mason Hoth, with the switch stance. Switch the dance. Little one foot wonder right there. We've seen a lot of switch stance today. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we saw Kai Lenny. Kai Lenny. Uh, Mason do it another time. Right. I think uh, Jake Maki is on mm, switch okay. dance. So. Which is, uh, you know, something that was really big actually during Eddie Aikau's time on yeah. the in the 70s, 60s. Um, they would I, often, I some surfers would, would always be frontside. Yeah, I call it bystantual. <laughs> they are able to go either way, which is really cool. And to always be frontside, you're right. Mason Ho with the grin and the smile. Always a character, that guy. Just an entertainer. Has some of the best uh, clips of him surfing on his on his on his site on YouTube. Yeah. Um, also, just came out with a with a documentary film called Through the Doggy Door. So he's very active, staying busy. And here he is on this one. Yeah, beautiful negotiation of that wave, kind of playing with it a little bit, and then of course doing the switch dance and gets the rug pulled out from under him a little bit. 
podcast. So honoring Eddie Aikau and his memory and his legacy and all the amazing um, accomplishments. When when Eddie was uh, surfing the North Shore, when he first started, he was 16 years old. And we talked about by the time he was he was 20, he became the first lifeguard on the North Shore. And then for the next 10 years, he just really, really honed in mm. his skills on surfing the North Shore. And his big goal was to, to win the Duke Invitational, which was the one really premier professional surfing competition on the North Shore. He would usually make the finals each year, final, final, but mm. would get second place or third place. Uh, it wasn't until 1977, when he was 30 years old, wow. that he ended up winning that event at Sunset Beach. And it was kind of a crowning moment, moment a crowning achievement in his life. Interestingly, his younger brother, Clyde Aikau, who, by the way, won this event back Correct. in 1986, right. uh, won the Duke Invitational in 1973. Before Eddie. Before Eddie. <coughs> so accomplished surfers. You know, even in this event today, we've seen generations with Mason Ho. His dad is in this event. Um, we, we've seen a lot of, lot of family legacy in this event. Um, and so kind of cool that goes back even to Eddie's story is uh, his relationship with his brother in surfing these events. And um, super cool to, to be a part of that uh, tradition and that we're here still on the North Shore celebrating um, so much talent and so much legacy here at Wendy Bay. Yeah, all these years later, uh, we're talking, you know, from the timeline you just described of competing at the Duke you know, at Sunset Beach, you know, we're talking, uh, you know, decades upon decades. And the fact that it is still so much alive and well, almost like he's still here. And that type of respect and that type of feeling that we're doing this all these years later. And uh, the mana, the vibe, the power, the, the, the being is such, is still so strong. Yeah, a lot of that is because not only was he a great surfer and a lifeguard, that saved many people's mm -hmm. lives, but also his commitment to his community mm -hmm. and sacrificing literally his life yeah. to save the crew on the Hokulea Voyaging Canoe, which was in 1978. He was on a voyage to Tahiti. The canoe, double hole canoe, which was a, a called Hokulea, it's a, it's a, it's a modern day version of a traditional sailing vessel that Hawaiians and Polynesians sailed on for thousands of years mm -hmm. before. 1975, 76, they went on their maiden voyage to Tahiti. And it the purpose, purpose of the voyage was to restore the, the mana and the pride and the knowledge that these Hawaiians were great navigators from ancient times. Mm -hmm. And so Eddie, after he wins the Invitational, signs up for this these voyages and goes on this second voyage to Tahiti where the canoe encounters some troubled waters, right. takes on some water, Eventually, the canoe capsizes. He has a surfboard with him on the canoe, tries to paddle for safety, but the nearest island was more than 40 miles away. Wow. He was never seen again. Mm. But that commitment to his community, commitment to his culture, commitment to the people that were on that canoe. Fortunately, there was an airplane that flew over, right. an inner island plane, and saw the canoe. And back then, um, here we are closer celebrating, but you know, the, the wherewithal to, to save his, to, to risk his life to save his canoe mates and his fellow peoples um, just shows the kind of person and the commitment that he had. And uh, so that's another, you know, layer to his legacy right. and the reasons why we celebrate him even through this event. Yeah, and the spirit of that uh, camaraderie, the spirit of that selflessness is what transcends the competition itself and the surfing and the big waves is Eddie's legacy and the way that, you know, he cared and uh, his actions spoke volumes of how much he cared for other people. Right, a lot of times people, there's, you know, Eddie Akau and Duke Hanamoku are very famous people in Hawaii. Duke Hanamoku lived for, you know, to a very ripe age. Like he died in 1968, he was in his 70s. Yeah. Eddie Aikau passed away when he was 31 years old. Apparently, this is uh, the 55th anniversary today of Duke passing. Right. Uh, so, on point right there, he, you know, had a, uh, a fairly long and uh, fruitful life. And Eddie, unfortunately, you know, cut shorter than we all would have liked. But it feels somewhat faded and, and destined when you even think about the crew of the Hokulea ended up being saved 
if he would have stayed, he could have also been saved. But you couldn't explain that to a guy like Eddie in that situation of, no, I'm going to go and I'm going to find help and I'm going to do what I can and what I know how to do to give us our best shot of survival. And that was in the time of that moment, that's what he was feeling. And he went off and, like you said, was never seen again. And encapsulate that spirit. And that's where that slogan, Eddie would go. And mm -hmm. that's what we talk about. And they, we perpetuate that here at this event. And these surfers are willing to take that same risk and that charge to go when the waves are massive in this uh, event. And so um, also trying to emulate, I suppose, our, right. our, 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 you know, athletes are trying to emulate that warrior spirit that Eddie brought to uh, to us in the surfing community. Here we go. Look at that huge oh late drop. Oh my gosh. Two big late drops. One does not survive. And that is Lucas Chianca in the orange putting it down. Wow. That was a courageous attempt. Does a backflip in celebration. Very appropriate. Oh. Our surfer who was in the front, I believe, that could have been Red Mason Ho. That was such a heavy wave. It was so steep. He was so steep. Yep. And for him, for the two of them right there together, and man, that was a great wave from Lucas Chanka, surfer from Brazil. There's Lucas paddling back out. Love the energy, the backflip, just again that mana you feel, and especially catching a wave of that manic magnitude mm. and the energy and the power that you're feeling as you're riding that wave. Yeah, the exhilaration of the drop right there. It looks like he's a goner, and I believe that is Mason Hole just free falling out of the sky right next to Lucas Chianca, and Lucas unfazed by. The free-falling Mason Ho just does a great job making it through that end section. There we go, Lucas, and then Mason. Oh, my gosh. We'll hope Mason's okay. He really fell hard right there. He is paddling next to Lucas and looks to be doing pretty well back on his board, at least moving and paddling. Here we go, another big set. Oh, my goodness, out the back. Kelly Mamala. Kilo's own Kelly Mamala. See if he can ride through that big explosion. Hold yes, on, brother. He does. All right. All right. Those boards are so big. Every time you see a surfer try to, you know, pump it and turn it, it is like, you know, you're riding on a huge log oh, yeah. that is like, you know, you're a lumberjack all of a sudden trying to carve this thing down the chute and. Kelly he kicks out before he hits the shore break. We've seen a couple of surfers attempting for that outside, inside oh kind of action. Huge drop that Shano. looked like Shano from Kona. Yep. That wave was barreling right behind him as he was taking off. Incredible wave. Some of our competitors dealing with that mountainous whitewash as oh, Shano all kicks these. out. This must be the tide and the swell. All the waves are starting to kind of close on that inside section where you have to make a decision. Hmm. Am I going to keep riding <laughs> and make it a long paddle back out? Or am I going to kick out here and uh, kind of quit while I'm ahead? Right. And I think they also saw in that last heat when Mark Healy straightened out yeah. what, how that worked out for him. So maybe yeah. they're learning from that example. Yeah, that connecting swell coming from the Haleiwa side of the bay is just right now being a little bit of a, a nuisance and uh, stopping our surfers from being able to continue to the inside as we watch Kaili Mamala on a nice wave survive that white water and him too kind of looking down the line and then sees this section thought about the cut back a little bit sees the section coming up ahead and says mm, I'm going to stop here although Kicking out right there was also kind of precarious because the, the waves right behind the bigger ones. Right. Like hopefully he made it over those, but uh, here we have live action. So much foam and whitewash in that channel. Barreling sets on the outside. Let's see if there's another surfer out there in the lineup to get these next ones.
So ever ever since that incident, 1978, um, with Hokulea, it really, you know, the, it, it was kind of a pivotal moment because it was a matter of like, do we continue doing this voyage or not? Uh, Hokulea was basically swamped, and uh, that was another thing that they decided, just like we're seeing here today, just to send it. To, they decided to go for it, mm -hmm. continue the voyaging, and when they did it this time, Eddie's spirit is sort of a part of the Polynesian Voyaging Society's mission and purpose and voyages today. They implemented a lot of changes, for, so now you, you, know, you have to have an escort boat with you. They implemented a lot of safety precautions, and in many ways in the name of Eddie Aikau mm. and for his sacrifice to make sure that um, it wasn't in vain. And, um, and then Nainua Thompson, who's the you know, captain of Hokulea, one of the captains, he explained really nicely in a, in a actually there's a really cool documentary, uh, ESPN did a 30 for 30 series. Yes. And if you haven't seen it, check that out. I think it's on Disney Plus, but um, in that film, um, he, you know, I know Thompson explains like, Eddie had to, to go, he says, the idea of, of the, the, the Hokulea, which was a vessel that carried the culture, the pride of the culture, during a very important time in Hawaii's history, known as the Hawaiian Renaissance, when Hawaiian culture and language and, and uh, was on the rise again. So it was like kind of essential that, that the canoe survived because it was carrying with it the, the spirit and the culture of Hawaii, you know, symbolically. And so I know what Thompson explains in this in this film. He says, you know, I, I think the thought of not having that was too much to bear for Eddie. And here we have Kaylee Mamala's wave replayed. You know, surfing has several types of magic tricks as we watch Kaylee Mamala live action. A nicely negotiated drop. There it is. And there there's a little disappearing act right there. So pipeline, you got the disappearing act in the barrel, the reappearing kind of abracadabra style. Here at Waimea, the Waimea magic trick is getting exploded at the bottom of the wave and then being able to reemerge mm. and reappear and really pull a big rabbit out of a big hat. <laughs> looking out to the horizon, looking possibly with more action headed our way here in heat number three of round two. 50 minute heats for these eight surfers to catch up to four waves. There's a four wave max when you have eight surfers in the water, being able to share the lineup equally or as equally as possible. And uh, once you catch four waves in your particular heat, uh, you are to move to the side or come in with their culture through surfing during a time period when a lot of Hawaiian cultural things weren't really celebrated. And uh, we especially saw that in Duke Hanamuku's era, but with, with Eddie Aikau, he represents this time period in the 1960s and 1970s of this rebirth mm -hmm. of identity and having pride in being Hawaiian. Mm -hmm. Because in generations previous, there wasn't as much, maybe there was a lot of you know, frowning on Hawaiian things. Right. Um, but it's really cool that Eddie's a product of that time period and becomes a great ambassador for the culture of surfing and the culture of Hawaii. We're gonna take a short break. We're at heat number three. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Stay right here. We got more Eddie Big Wave Invitational on the other side. This valley is very special. It was a sanctuary, a place where people would come for safety and just how special Waimea Valley is, you bring out the specialness of our entire island and our archipelago too. It's such a serene place and it's just captured my heart and I just love being here at Waimea Valley. Dear mainland, aloha. My brother and I hear lots of you have discovered a real Hawaiian favorite, big wave golden ale. That's the good kind of stuff, yeah bro. Maybe it's the island flavor that makes each sip taste like a little vacation. That's a whole lot of little vacations right there, huh, brother? That's like a big vacation. Control, stay super busy, bro. Super busy. Yeah, they've, we've seen the skis have to, you know, dodge some of those closeout mm -hmm. sets, and so a lot of times they'll come and they'll beach the ski to, to wait in between the sets as those are closeouts coming and then get it back in. I'm not sure what's uh, 
going on here if they're they're decommissioning one of the skis but yeah hard to tell you know with these machines of exactly what's going on because sand gets in there uh you know they're being you know run all pistons firing you know red lining every set that comes in so maybe some tinkering maybe some uh, uh recalibrating on the jet ski but lucky thing we've got a lot of good help in the way of horn water patrol and our north shore lifeguards down there handling the business we appreciate you guys very much comes a wave got two guys paddling for this one nice deep wave they're close to each other they are really close we got some real camaraderie here yeah i think that's shane dorian out in front and uh, behind might have been uh, Peter Mel in the black. Looked like a darker colored jersey. We'll get that confirmation of ID when we can, but definitely looked like Shano was in the purple coming towards us, riding that wave a little longer. He was out in front and uh, possibly Peter Mel in the black, the deeper surfer kind of caught up to him. And then, you know, those two guys, they've been at this for a while. <laughs> Uh, Peter, probably a little longer than Shane uh, in the form of experience and, and age level, but uh, the uh, appreciation and admiration equal among both of those surfers. Yeah, well, Shane Doran has been an invitee to this event um, since the early, since the 90s. So, yeah, he's been, uh, he's a mainstay in the, in the surfing world with big wave surfing. Was yes. One of those uh, that pioneered, you know, surfing at Jaws and Peahi on Maui and also um, help with the development of the safety vests that they're Correct. using. Yeah, and you know, talking earlier about the Hawaiian Renaissance that Eddie was a part of in uh, that time frame of the 60s and 70s, when we come to the early 2000s, from the late 90s to the early 2000s, the attention kind of shifted into the towing in mm. big wave arena and the you know, impressive things you could do when you involve a jet ski and catching waves and the maneuvers because you didn't have to paddle. Shane Dorian was part of that crew, the Renaissance crew, if you will, going back to paddle in and the original form of wave catching. Oh, look wow. at this, how close they are to each other. That is Peter Mel in the black. He is back in the black. Here comes the, the camaraderie there. Wow. It's like the Titanic. Yeah, they think, don't let go. <laughs> Might have been our first embrace on a wave during an eddy. I don't know if that was like, hey, call him my sorry brother. Right, or, right. hey, let's do this together. But We're on it together. Great wave. So in that situation, Peter Mill might get the nod with a little bit higher score being the deeper surfer, but once again, no no penalty, no interference, and a non-priority situation. Just well, how to save people. Check out this wave off the back, a bomb. Oh my goodness. There was some unfortunate soul on that wave. It was a colossal wall of water, Uncle Clyde getting uh, some work done on the beach right there, handling the directing. You know, part of him wants to be out there, but also there is, uh, you know, the uh, responsibility of making sure everything is going smoothly on the beach and up in the scaffolding. But wow, what a huge wave and a crazy wipeout for one of our surfers. Looks like everybody's okay, but yeah, I saw a small speck and a big splash. <laughs> Which and, is and there quite was a the pause. combo. There was a pause. You could see somebody catching it, and yeah. then there wasn't anything, and then splash. Right. So that free fall uh, lasted for a little while. Oh, man. Reminds me a little bit of that. We saw of Zeke Lau earlier, um, and there was another surfer. Our South African surfer also had another one of those. Oh, that was pole. Grant Twiggy Baker. Oh, Grant yeah. Baker. So, man, that definitely is dramatic. We hope that surfer is okay, and try and ID that for you in a moment. You know, most times in the best case scenario of that bad situation, you are able to get some penetration into the wave and out the back. 
as we see another ride here from one of our goofy foot backside surfers that looks to be orange lucas jumbo chianka who had an amazing ride earlier in this heat now just adding some numbers to his score working that board back and forth oh doing a turn oh wow carving it that's a big board to be carving approaching the inside shore break. Is he gonna make it? He's gonna do a floater. <laughs> oh my gosh, and then just goes back on his heels, but I think that might be the first time in any commentary we narrated the maneuver floater. <laughs> on the shore, going for it. Love this guy. He's definitely got a lot of useful energy that he brings to big wave surfing. Him and Kai Lenny have done mm. amazing things together. Um, surfing there in Portugal with massive waves and still, you know, do 360 errors on the kickouts. And so I love the, the energy and the playfulness of it. Yeah, he's been at this big wave game for a long time and worked really hard to be one of the, you know, recognizable names and always there, uh, whether it was Waimea, Peahi, Nazare, Toto Santos, all the big name breaks, Mavericks. Lucas has been there, and he's been there for a long time, and he's still doing it. Plus, this guy surfs really good on small waves, too, on shorter boards. Yeah. So it's cool to see. Um, uh oh, hopefully he's all right here. I see him getting some assistance up the beach, left the board for his caddy to manage for him and just getting onto the high ground to check out possibly a knee injury, possibly an ankle. He was hobbling up the beach, you know, getting some help, hopping on that one foot. Here is the wipeout. Oh, oh my, my gosh. I think that might have been Keala Kennelly. Yeah, in the blue. Oh. Just absolutely putting it on the line. Keke, Keala, huge, huge wave. And the amount of guts and commitment to be able to hurl yourself over a ledge like that is almost difficult to understand. Oh, my goodness. She is so fearless. We've seen her in massive waves uh, in Tahiti and in Pipeline and now at Waimea just sending it. This was the last replay of Lucas Chumbo. His leg seems okay at that moment. Mm -hmm. I don't know if... It was, uh, we'll, we'll try and see if it was the floater or maybe when he was on the inside of his board, chopped him at the at the legs, but we'll see what happens here. Yeah, he goes up, hits the, the whitewash right there, and possibly something underneath water happened right there. He was rolling fairly close to his board and could have uh, had contact with his board underwater, which... You know, another scary part of surfing waves like this is the equipment that you have to ride. It's not a little 6-0 twig, you know. It is a huge, heavy log with a lot of sharp edges. And when you're getting rolled in a big white water like that, the amount of force that can be from your body and from your board uh, can be very, very dangerous. Well... Good news is he's he's there and he's uh, mm -hmm. you know talking into the to our safety crew and getting the attention that he needs. Hopefully it's just something minor. A lot of folks still checking out the action live on the beach right there. A very unique view to be basically ground level, you know, ground zero for seeing the mass height of these waves. And also feeling that thunder of the crashing shore break and the big waves on the outside. And then you have kind of the second tier spectators that are gathered along the cliffs and the bluffs. Oh, and some of the very lucky spectators that are in those houses that front Waimea Point right there. There's Justine DuPont on that wave. Look like uh, may have crossed with another competitor. Yeah, Justine, one of our two. Wahine competitors in this heat. We saw Keala Kennelly with the absolute oh charging. Goodness. That looked heavier than any wipeout we've seen today. That and does. Keala's just sending it. A 
was the last one. We are Justine Dupont and another rider there. Hopefully there wasn't, you know, interference on that one, but they got kind of close to each other. Yeah, that that might have been um that might have been Keala joining her. Oh. It was a goofy foot surfer. And Lucas and Keala are the only two goofy foots in this heat. So Lucas is on the beach uh, right. tending to a possible leg injury or mishap there. So we hope the best for Lucas. And I think that was Keala that was mixing it up and uh, sharing a wave with right. Justine. Again, There's Justine. big props to our female competitors. All six of them showing up strong. All of them catching waves and big surf and charging it. And as I was saying earlier, uh, Rocky, that it's 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 appropriate because in Hawaiian culture, in ancient Hawaiian times, a lot of stories of Hawaiian women surfing. Mm. And um, most notably, there's one named Kelea Nui Noho Ana Api Api. So Kelea, mm. for short, was from Maui, and she was one of the best surfers of Hawaii. And so it was hundreds of years ago in our uh, the annals of Hawaiian history. And she eventually moves over to Oahu where she becomes uh, a, a popular figure in Waikiki. Where Pretty she, well known, yeah. Yeah, and where she ends up surfing and uh, awesome waves here on Oahu. But um, from Maui, powerful chief and noted to being, you know, she marries a guy named Kalamakua who's a chief in Waikiki. Mm -hmm. And the two of them become like, the surfing power the couple. power couple, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good, good description. They said when the waves were huge, she would go out to the outer breaks in Waikiki and ride the waves all the way across the bay, something that Duke Hanamoku was later noted for doing right. on those rare occasions. We'd catch one from Castles way all the way outside. Where it all connects, it's yeah. It's connecting it. And uh, so Kelea was known as one of these great uh, women surfers. And so it's so awesome to see in this event. Uh, it's in this heat. We see Justine DuPont and uh, Keala Kennelly charging these massive waves here at Waimea Bay. And uh, so awesome, awesome to be revisiting history and, and legacy and and talking about Eddie Aikau and the kind of legacy he had and an admonition to all of us to to carry on those kinds of uh, values that uh, were passed on from our kupuna like uh, these individuals like Eddie Aikau. Well, we've got heat number three active right now. Some of heat number four might have made their way into the water. You see quite a few jerseys that are in the lineup or around the lineup area currently, and that would be uh, that would be the reason for that. Eight surfers in each heat. At this second round, we're pushing the time up to 50 minutes per heat. As you look at, we got a great drone shot from the Waimea Point side, looking west towards the. Uh, Wainai mountain range right. in the background and the okay. rest of the North Shore that's seconds. down towards uh, Chuts Reef, Laniakea, all the way down to Haleiwa and shimmering sunlight on the water. Uh, looking quite tranquil right now on screen, but it is so crazy how it turns to chaos. And uh, speaking of controlled chaos, our spectators on the beach looks like they're all behaving themselves enjoying yeah bro you are <laughs> doing what you do and uh, great to see some lively energy down on the beach at Waimea here some energy in the water yeah beautiful wave here from our rider in yellow that's uh, that's Kahea and Kahea had some great waves in his round he one did. heat he did he uh, did making the most of this birthday gift invitation alternate into the rounds of the eddy right on kahea and we saw keala kennelly on her way in from a wave on the outside getting a little tripped up in that foamy section but gets a wave under her belt shane dorian sharing a wave with justine dupont yeah, a couple of party waves to round out this heat Consistent action. Here's a recap for you. This was Kaylee Mamala from Big Island riding through those chops and bouncing around and making his way through that. Yeah, Keala Kennelly 
Yeah, okay, Grabbing okay. the rail, and this was her last wave. We just kind of caught the tail end of. That was the beginning of it. Oh, and then you have this oh, bomb man. here. Amazing wave. This was Chung, Lucas Chunka, and Mason Ho trying to get a piece of that, but uh, Lucas is the one who rides out successfully of that massive wave backflip out of excitement. <laughs> Yeah, Shane Dorian got a few also. Don't count the veteran out. He is here to show what he can do on some large moving mountains of water. Another ride for Yellow, that is uh, Kahea Hart. Looking like he's also sporting a hefty front knee brace. Oh, and this Peter Mel and here. Shane Dorian sharing a wave together here in heat number three. You know, the amount of big waves ridden between the two of them has to be uh, in the thousands. We'll be right back with more action from the Eddie Big Wave Invitational here at Waimea Bay. Heat 4 coming up next. From a distance, you don't really notice, but once you really start sorting the sand, you realize, wow, there is actually a lot of plastic in here. There's definitely a need for us to clean the beaches. Sometimes you need a huge army of people to make an impact. Although we might not see the direct benefit of it, hopefully future generations will, and we have to start somewhere. Movement. Our Hawaii moves. We are inspired and then we move with it. Movement. Yeah, At Aloha Kia, you will be inspired. It's designed into every Kia. Be it for work, for family, for fun, for the environment, for the drive. In everything we do at Aloha Kia, we're inspired to get you moving. Inspiration, it's all over Hawaii. Go find it. Reserve the 2023 Kia Newark with Aloha Kia's express purchase. Easy member. You know a guy. Today's television broadcast is powered by Hawaiian Telcom. Experience the speed of Hawaii's only 100% fiber internet with Phi Optics for your home or business. The Eddie Aikau Big Wave Invitational is brought to you by Hawaiian Airlines. Proud to be Hawaii's longest serving airline, offering over 120 flights a day between the islands. The KHON2 News at 7 p.m. on KHI with Bridget Namata and Gina Manjeri. Hawaii's only 7 o'clock news. The spectacle, the celebration. It's the Eddie Big Wave Invitational in memory of Eddie Aikau. And we've seen just an inspiring, exciting day here at Waimea. The 10th running of this event, and uh, it's been an exciting day. We got two more heats to go in round number two. I'm Kaipo along with Rocky Cannon. Oh, coming off that last heat, Rocky, how are you feeling? Uh, I'm out of breath. Uh, <laughs> as we've said that, uh, few heats over during this day i mean consistency of the swell the you know producing of extra large waves by our mother ocean on this particular day has been fascinating uh so much appreciation uh, for what these guys and girls have been doing out here and what it takes to be invited to this event it all just culminates into this day that you know creates so much crazy memories of epic rides gnarly wipeouts and you know so many people on the beach are going to have their own stories of their eddy experience and so on and so on it is just uh, like you said very inspiring and also uh, incredibly entertaining yeah and it does not come without cost uh, lucas shumbo shianka we saw him limping up the beach mm -hmm. after an inspired wave. Uh, he may have broken his leg. Oh, man. And uh, he's sitting county lifeguards are taking care of him right now. And uh, we'll update you uh, if we get any more updates. But um, good news is, heads above water. He's on the beach. And uh, he's getting cared to. You know, rules I like to live by. You know, don't eat yellow snow. Uh, don't do floaters at Waimea Shore Break during the eddy. <laughs> but... <clears throat> I give him a lot of credit. That was charging Chianka. Epic performance, brother.
Yeah. And I uh, hope you're okay. Now, I remember Shumbo in big waves actually started the, the first guy to kind of do those bunny hops yeah. down the face. <laughs> this happened during the break. White out there, and that is uh, Tikanui Smith, the Tahitian. And reemerges there with a beautiful water shot. Great footage from Larry Haynes transmitting to the Sultan Air Studio. And the Hawaiian Water Patrol obviously uh, credited for the positioning of that shot and wonderful work. Thanks so much, you guys. And trying to think of uh, when the last time we may have had a Tahitian competitor. <clears throat> I know we've had invitees. I, yeah. <clears throat> well, invitees, I could think of guys right. like uh, Poto, right. for sure. Right. Yep. Our scene, perhaps, in, way back in the day. <clears throat> but as far as, uh, you know, actually competing, yep. um, I'd like to give credit to our Tahitian, yeah. Tikanui Smith. Tikanui Smith, uh, 25 years old, from Orea. And this is his first Eddie, and he's already making uh, an impact. Also, out in the water, our women's competitor in the pink, North Shore Zone, Makani Adric right. is out there. Ian Walsh is out in the blue jersey. Josh Moniz, second generation Eddie invitee, is out there in purple. Yellow, the North Shore Zone, Cole Christensen. We talked about Tika Nui Smith in the white. Grant Twiggy Baker will be in orange. Jamie Mitchell is in red. And look out for the hard charging Billy Kemper. He's out there in the black jersey. Billy is back and he's in black. And looks like possibly on our screen here, we're looking at the uh, activity just beyond the lineup and uh, some big waves approaching. We know they're big. We're just trying to gauge whether or not these are some set waves. And a couple of surfers starting to return to the prone position and paddle out a little bit. Yeah, as they paddle out, I, I want to give some thanks all the visuals that you're seeing. We mm -hmm. had cameras on. I want to thank all the folks over there at Ohia Farms. Ohia